Well, we have to bear in mind that Miss Truss is not known as the world's greatest speaker. Um, and I think there were times in this speech when it had the slight air of the headmaster giving a lecture uh, to their pupils. And particularly towards the end of the speech, she really did rather struggle to get, you know, that peroration that we always uh, expect when, you know, the tone rises um, and you try to get the audience on their feet. Indeed, apart from the reference to Ukraine and saying that Ukraine must win, when the audience uh, uh, did get up, she didn't otherwise actually manage to get uh, the audience uh, up onto their feet. So, to that extent, at least, you know, uh, this is not her, her greatest art. Now, what did she have to say? Well, what she had to say was, in effect, laying out a theme with which we've got very familiar since the Tory leadership contest during the summer, which is that this is somebody who does believe very much in a smaller state, lower taxation, uh, less regulation of business. And it's very, very clear and it's very confirmed, very clearly confirmed by what she had to say that this is certainly the most right wing uh, conservative leader certainly since Margaret Thatcher, and we can probably argue about whether she is more or less right-wing than Margaret Thatcher. Now, that, of course, doesn't mean to say she's wrong, but the point I'm trying to make is that this does mark a move away from the centre of British politics as compared uh, with her predecessors. And the question is, uh, first of all, can she take her party with her on that journey? And we've seen during the course of this conference uh, various disputes and arguments about aspects of her proposals. And secondly, can she take the country? Because although the speech mentioned both low taxation and sound money stroke fiscal responsibility, what we weren't told in this speech was how the potential conflict and tension between those two was going to be resolved. Because, of course, the reason why the government got into trouble in the financial markets last week is that the lower taxes were not matched by spending cuts. And this government is still not telling us what spending cuts, if, if, if any, are in the end going to match this lower taxation and whether or not these are going to be spending cuts that the electorate will be willing to tolerate. Absolutely. It does seem like there's still a lot of ambiguity in exactly how this is going to work. Uh, Liz Truss also in that speech seemed very divisive, in my opinion. She kept talking a lot about the anti-growth coalition, comparing it to her growth coalition. It seems like there's a real us versus them mentality, perhaps more than we've seen before in the UK. Is that correct? Well, I'm not sure anybody would say this is more than before the UK, because the truth is, uh, the division between Leavers and Remainers over Brexit very definitely generated an us versus them uh, 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 mentality. But of course, in a sense, insofar as that issue doesn't have the salience that it once did, and you're a conservative politician, you've now got to think of an alternative way of trying to frame the argument. I mean, this was something that came towards the end of her speech. This was her, in a sense, trying to draw a clear, uh, you know, clear dividing line between herself um, and her opponents. This is something that happens at all party conferences, and to that extent, at least, perhaps we shouldn't take it too curiously. Of course, certainly, if we were to actually begin to argue about the substance of it, you know, what was Sakir Starmer in his party conference speech talking about last week? Well, actually, it was talking about green growth. And the interesting thing, in a sense, I think, about British politics at the moment is that both our main, main political parties have identified relatively low growth as a fundamental problem facing the country. It's just that we're now going to be faced with two very different paths for achieving it. One from Liz Truss, which we might regard as a relatively traditional uh, right of centre perspective of a smaller state, lower taxation and less regulation. In the contrast to Keir Starmer, arguing that what we need is to uh, pursue a green economy and that in the wake of pursuing a green economy and trying to get uh, carbon emissions down, we will also achieve a more sustainable uh, growing economy. So these are going to be two very clear visions with which the electorate are going to be faced when we do eventually get around to an election, which, of course, may not be for a couple of years' time. Indeed, but there was a poll that came out that said that if there were to be an election that was to happen today, 54% of people would vote Labour against 21% for the Conservatives. That doesn't bode well at all for Liz Truss in the coming months. I know, I know. Look, this government is in terrible, terrible electoral trouble. I mean, we don't need to, uh, look, uh, to land on one poll. We have had 10 polling companies poll since the difficulty in the financial markets 
On average, they put Labour 25 points ahead. There has been an eight and a half, there's been an eight point swing from Conservative to Labour in no uh, less than 10 days. And that is a swing on the scale that happened the last time a Conservative administration got in trouble with the markets. That was Black Wednesday in September 1992 when the pound was forced by the markets out of the European exchange rate mechanism. And you know, one of the warning signs for this government is that it, that government never ever recovered politically from the sight of it having been forced to change tack by the markets. And we've seen something not dissimilar during the course of the last week. And that government, by the way, John Major's government did achieve the kind of growth that Liz Truss is now saying she wants to create. But despite achieving that, it never succeeded in turning the party's political uh, fortunes around. And therefore, there is no guarantee that even if Liz Truss is right and her uh, proposals do uh, generate greater growth in the economy, that this will necessarily mean that the electorate will forget and forgive the experience of the last 10 days. John, thanks for that. John Curtis.